Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is paper. P-A-P-E-R. You say that every week, don't you? Really? You bet your life, huh? It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 of the Soto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. First, we have a housewife and a man with an interesting occupation, Groucho. This is Helen Pfeiffer and Mr. Milt Whistler. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you sign around the house. Helen Pfeiffer and Milt Whistler, huh? Well, so far, we've got two-thirds of a bugle corps. <laughs> Mrs. Pfeiffer, where, where are you from? Uh, well, Mr. Marx, I was born in Bayou Serra, Louisiana. Where is that exactly, say, in relation to Baton Rouge? Uh, well, uh, Bayou Sarah used to be uh, about 100 miles south of uh, Baton Rouge, just across the Mississippi River. What do you mean it used to be? Did the alligator swallow it up? Uh, well, uh, almost. Uh, the, you see, the Mississippi River uh, washed, uh, just washed it away. It flooded, and Bayou Sarah went down to the bottom. That's so. Well, that's not very handy if you want to go to the post office, is it? <laughs> You're uh, Milt Whistler, is that right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I suppose you've had all the jokes about Whistler's mother. And... I'm afraid so. Yeah. That's uh, been run into the ground. <laughs> been run in the ground, you say? I'm afraid so, yes. <laughs> well, I'll get in a hole someplace and try it again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, what, what is your hometown? Uh, I was born in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. just below the Coliseum. Oh. <laughs> well, you must see the football games free then, huh? No, I didn't get a lifetime pass. What sort of work do you do now, now that you're out of the Coliseum? Uh, I'm a rose hybridist. Rose hybridist? I knew her very well, huh? You did. <laughs> she had a pair of the prettiest stems I ever saw. <laughs> now, just what is a hybridist? Uh, hybridist is a man who makes his living crossing plants. Well, don't ever cross a snapdragon. <laughs> You'll take a bite out of your plants if you do that. <laughs> well, I don't understand. What is the purpose of all this double-crossing? Well, uh, the end result is uh, a new variety or a new strain with... Uh, Improved characteristics such as longer bud form, uh, better foliage, more vigor, more fragrance, better bloom habit. You mean every time like you cross the flowers, they improve? And... No, not every time. No, no not by a long shot. No. Have you developed any any neurosis yourself? I have a neurosis. Any new roses, I mean? Huh? Uh, <laughs> yes, I've developed four or five. Our firm, Germains, have introduced uh, varieties such as uh, Candle Glow, Amigo. Grand Canyon, Old Stork, Sun Valley, and Chrysler Imperial. Chrysler Imperial? Yes, Chrysler Imperial. <laughs> Very fine rose. What about calling one the Groucho Special? After all, I'm sort of the flower of American manhood. <laughs> you got any varieties to suggest as parents? Well, that's what they mean when they call me a blooming idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Tonight, we've got a surprise for you. We've added something to the quiz. You play the game exactly the same way, with this exception. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Is that clear? Yes. All right, now let's play it and see how it works. You selected movie quiz. 70. On top 70. $70. $70. All right, who plays the title role in the motion picture, Julius Caesar? Well, I know, I know. Oh. I know, and I just couldn't think well, of it. I, I know. Sometimes it, you get nervous up here. It was Lewis Calhoun. Oh. 
Well, you've lost half your bankroll, so you now have $50. Is that clear? Instead of having 100 you know, have 50. 50. I'm sorry. It's for the 30 Okay. 30 Betty Grable and Marilyn Monroe are two of the three female stars in How to Marry a Millionaire. Who is the third? No, you said Lauren Bacall, Betty Grable, and Marilyn Monroe. That's right. So you got the whole three. Well, your bankroll is climbing again. You now have $80. Now you have $80. <coughs> now what do you want to try? Let's try the $80. All right. $80? What is James Wong Howe's job in the making of a movie? He's a cameraman. That is true. He's a cameraman. Your bankroll now amounts to $160. Which question do you want this time? Shall we take the 90? Do you want to take the 90? All right. The $90 one. 90. Who is the director of such pictures as The African Queen and Moulin Rouge? Who is the director? Very famous director. Oh. All right, the bell. I'm sorry. Well, you should have known. It is John Houston. And you wind up with $80. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a man with an unusual occupation, Groucho. His name is Mr. Art McBride. His partner, Dr. Elnor Fraser, was chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Eleanor Fraser and Art McBride, huh? Dr. Eleanor Fraser, huh? And Art, you're Art McBride, huh? Eleanor, you're, you're a doctor? Yes, I am. Well, compared to my doctor, you're certainly a treat instead of a treatment. <laughs> Where are you from, Doc? Well, I was born in Woodlake, California. That's a small town on the way to Sequoia National Park. But now I live in Laguna Beach. Are you, are you married? No, I'm not. Not married, huh? Really, being a doctor, I thought maybe by this time you'd have some guy all sewed up. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Doc? I'm 26. 26. Well, that's a very nice age for a doctor. What kind of a doctor are you? Are you a horse, human, or, or tree? Well, I'm an intern, but I'm planning to specialize in radiology. Where do you do your intern? At Los Angeles County Hospital. That's the second largest hospital in the world. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Does a doctor make pretty good money? I understand they're all loaded. Well, I'm not. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I make $75 a week, and uh, when taxes, uh, excuse me, a month. $75 <laughs> yes. a month? Yes, and after taxes are taken out. I was going to propose out, to you. <laughs> <laughs> after taxes are taken out, it's uh, $71.30. After all the medical education you've had, huh? you could make more money slicing salami in a delicatessen. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's not too much difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admire you, Doctor. When a pretty girl devotes her life to helping other people, she deserves a lot of credit. You can operate on me anytime you want. <laughs> and you're Art McBride? That's right, Gajo. Mm -hmm. where, where are you from? Well, I was from Canada, from Vancouver, but I've been in the United States many years. Why did you leave uh, Vancouver? I uh, ran out of fish up there. Were you a fisherman? That's right. I was in the commercial fishing for oh. about 25 years. And uh, what sort of work do you do now? I have the uh, ocean aquarium down at Hermosa Beach, Gracho. Oh. About 12 miles south of here. What kind of a place is that? It's a public aquarium with a display of all the different types of fish. There's sharks and seals and sea lions and bat rays, electric eels, piranhas. And big octopus. So I could go on naming a lot of things. Octopus? That. That's right. What is the plural of octopus, do you know? Octopi or octopuses. Mm. <laughs> Whatever you want. What is the most interesting exhibit you have to offer? We have a new one, uh, Gacho. It's Winnie the Whale with the... Uh, Winnie the Whale? With the detachable tail. Oh. <laughs> is that anything like Minnie the Moocher? <laughs> I beg you, it sounded like you said Winnie the Whale with a detachable tail. Would, is, would you give me that again? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, that is correct? Yes, sir, that is. Uh, what do you mean, a detachable tail? Well, it's about a year and a half ago that Winnie was a California gray whale swimming out in the ocean, quite happy. And the How do you know? Well, I, uh, I'll take that back. She was swimming out in the ocean. Oh. And uh, <laughs> It's not easy to know when a whale is happy. <laughs> around a lot of them, believe me. They're tough going. They won't say, let him, 
They can have a headache and he won't get a peep out of them. They just, they just sit there and spout. <laughs> Well, tell us some more about this uh, detachable <coughs> tail. Well, the destroyer uh, rammed the uh, Winnie, and the tail was completely cut off by the propellers of the ship. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard uh, picked the whale up and brought her into shore at San Diego at Mission Bay. I went down with cranes, raised her out, and brought her up to the Ocean Aquarium, aquarium and I embalmed the animal. Well, Art, I, I really, I think you're a genius. Not only that, but you're a great businessman. A smart operator and a whale of a fellow. Put it that. <laughs> I'm just humoring you. I don't take any chances with a screwball who embalms whales. Huh? <laughs> you know, he might take it in his head to put me on exhibition. <laughs> well, I must say I've learned nothing about whales here tonight, but fortunately the time has come to play you bet your life. Can I ask you a question just before you get off? Well, it depends, man. Uh, I was watching one of your shows, Groucho, around Christmas time, and you you were going to uh, get a uh, bus for the McKinley School for Boys. That's did, true. Did yeah. you get it? I don't think they've got it yet. Why, why do you ask? We have two ravens that collect pennies from people. Down at the aquarium, the people give them pennies, and they hide the pennies, and we've been saving them for some good charity. There's about $500 in those sacks, oh. and the ravens, I think, would like to help you with your cause and fix those schoolboys up with a bus. Well, Art, I... <laughs> well, Art, I think that's a wonderful idea, and I'm pretty sure your $500 should bring that total to just about what they need for a bus. That's fine. I'll okay. throw a hundred of my own money in there, too. I didn't get it from a raven, but I'll throw <laughs> one. Well, now we got $600, huh? Well, you know, we've had a lot of interest in this, and during the week I'll find out exactly how it stands and give you a complete report. I don't know. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple, Mrs. Pfeiffer and Mr. Whistler, won $80, and the secret word is paper. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Now, which question do you want to try for? 10, 50, 70, 90, 100? 70. How much? 70. 70. Now, what do you call the special type of scissors used to cut cloth so it won't ravel? Uh, pinking shears. Pinking shears is right. You now have $170. See how handy it is to have a girl on the show who does operations? <laughs> probably pink many a customer down there. <laughs> Okay, have 80. you ever had a doctor that looked as good as that? Uh, I'm going to get sick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sick for 15 minutes. You're going to try 80, eh? What do you call a Russian tea iron with a charcoal heating unit? I'm sure you've heard uh, of this. Samovar. So, that's right. Samovar, best friend. <laughs> Your bankroll now stands at $250. 90? Oh, okay. 90, 90, eh? 90. What is the one letter of the alphabet that does not appear on the standard dial phone? No, it's Q. Mm -hmm. You now have lost one half of your bankroll, so you have one hundred twenty-five dollars. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? Hundred. A hundred. <laughs> what do you call the swinging bar to which the traces of a horse's harness are fastened? The um, whipple tree. Oh, you're so cute. That is absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> total of $225. Well, thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. And, Doctor, I'm going to call on you real soon. George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some high school girls to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Jan Van Alston to be our guest. And her partner is Mr. Ed Ryan, Groucho. And when I heard he was in town, I invited him down to the show. And in just a moment, I think you're going to understand why I did. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Deal. <laughs> Bush Beckety, say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Well, what are, uh, are you Santa Claus or Rip Van Winkle? Huh? Neither one, Groucho. Well, who are you? I'm Ed Ryan. Well, you're evading the issue. What are you hiding under those whiskers? Oh, I'm not hiding anything, Groucho. Well, what a waste, huh? 
There's room under there for a 12-pound turkey and a pumpernickel. <laughs> you say you're Ed Ryan? Ed Ryan. Where are you from, Eddie, my lad? from the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. Well, welcome. Welcome to the smoggy plains of Los Angeles. <laughs> well, what are you doing in town, uh, Ed? Are you bringing in a load for a mattress factory? I'm here on a visit, uh, Groucho. Oh. Well, what do you think of our little city, Ed? Well, I think it's a wonderful little place. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people it. have been awful nice to me, Groucho. You've got some pretty darn nice-looking women, too. <laughs> Why, Ed, you're nothing but an old grouch Joe Marx. <laughs> Let's see, you're Jan Van Alstein? Okay. Well, unless my eyes are deceiving me, you're a very attractive young lady. Well, thank you very much. If your eyes were deceiving you, you could say something nice about me, too. <laughs> How old are you, Jan? I'm 16. <laughs> 16, huh? What, you, you go to school, I presume? Huh? I do. Mm -hmm. Santa Monica High School. Is that where you go, Santa Monica mm -hmm. High? Yeah? The greatest, finest school in California. It is, huh? This apple polishing won't do you any good, you know. <laughs> if your marks aren't satisfactory, you won't pass anyway. <laughs> Mr. Ryan, let's get back to you. When did you start growing that schnitzel you've got there? Huh? When I joined the Army, Groucho. You were in the Army? Yes, Well, I let was. me guess. You're certainly too old for the last war. Were you in World War I? No. Spanish-American War? No. Civil War? No, I was with General George Custer. That's impossible. Custer was even before my time. <laughs> How old do you say you are, Ed? I'm 97. <laughs> Ed, if you're 97, I'm Bing Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> Can you prove it? Yes, you know, sir. a lot of people say they're 80, 90. I can, Groucho. Here's my baptismal certificate in, in black and white. Baptismal certificate, huh? St. Mary's Church, Center, Iowa, July 11th, 1856. But, and I was born on June the 23rd, 1856. Well, say, that's, that's remarkable. You said you don't look 97. By the way, if you were there with Custer... There's a small question I'd like to ask you. Uh, weren't Custer and all his men massacred by the Indians? Yes, that's right. There was no survivors at the battlefield. Well, I don't want to be nosy, but you don't look dead to me. Uh, <laughs> how did you get away? Well, I'm a technical survivor. I was left behind to care for a sick buddy. And uh, by being left behind for, uh, to care of this sick buddy, I missed the battle. Oh, uh... You were certainly were lucky, weren't you? Huh? Yes, I was. And what, what did you do then? Uh? Well, sir, I, I was so mad at the Army because they hadn't sent me back help to take care of this buddy of mine that I, uh, I was angry at him, and I just quit the Army and never, never reported to the Army again. <laughs> you never went back to the Army? You mean you... you... You went over the hill? You were A.W.O.L.? Well, yes, you could say I was A.W.O.L. for 75 years. <laughs> well, if I were you, Ed, I'd, I'd sneak back into that camp and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you never know the difference, eh? And don't worry about the Indians, either. They're all busy hunting uranium. <laughs> Well, hasn't the Army been after you all these years, Ed? No, Groucho. According to the Army records, I had... You're dead? Yes, I'm dead, and, and my name is on the monument out on the battlefield out there. <laughs> well, Ed, your secret's safe with me. I, I won't tell a soul. <laughs> right at this moment, however, 200 colonels in the Pentagon are getting dizzy just thinking of your back pay. <laughs> Well, it's been fun talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. Just win more than the other couples, and you'll get a crack at the bonanza later on. In the race for the $1,500, Dr. Fraser and Mr. McBride are leading with $225. Now, let us see what we have here. We start you off with a $100 bankroll. 
And whenever you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. $10 one is an easy one, then they get progressively harder as you go along. Now, which one do you want? Mm, we'd like to try the $50 one. 50 Is that all right That's with you? right. What kind of bird plays an important part in the poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? A raven? Would you think it would be a raven? No, it's the albatross. Yeah. You've lost half of your bankroll, so you now have $50. Now you have $50. Now what do you want to try? Let's try your 60. Yeah. 60? Well, let's try the 40. 40? Huh. Yeah. 40? The name Raynard is associated with what kind of animal? Would you repeat that to me? The name Raynard, R-E-Y-N-A-R-D, is associated with what kind of an animal? You don't know guess. I believe it might be a mink. No, it's, it's a fox. Well, now you have twenty-five dollars. Is that right. right, George? Now, what do you want to try? Whatever you choose is okay with me. Yeah. yeah. Right, we'll take it. We'll try the thirty dollars. Sadie, according to the song in the Disney cartoon, who was the bull with the delicate ego? He liked flowers. Good night, good night. That is right, Ferdinand. Yeah. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. You now have $55. Right. I'm helping you out, George. You sure are. Now, what do you want to try? 100? 90? 10? 60? 60? What was the name of President Roosevelt's famous little Scotty? Bella. Well, okay. that's close enough. It's Fowler, but we give you that one. And you wind up with $115. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, sir. And that means that Dr. Frazier and Mr. McBride with $225 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here comes uh, Mr. McBride and the doctor, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Groucho? Well, doctor, you Thank may you. only make $71 a month, but here's your chance to become extremely wealthy in one crack. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. You ready? 150 years ago, an emperor crowned himself because he said, no man is great enough to crown me. For $1,500, who was this emperor? Talk it over. <laughs> what is the question you two have decided upon? Uh, try Napoleon. That was right, Napoleon. Yes. Huh? Oh, my God. Yes. How much else did they win, George? Well, they won $225 <laughs> in the quiz, so that's $1,725 altogether. What are you going to do with all that swag? Well, you going to buy your own hospital? No, I'm not. I'm going to pay back some debts I incurred in medical school. Oh, and you? Are you going to get a new tail for the whale? <laughs> <laughs> no, Why don't you get a new whale for the tail? Huh? <laughs> no, Groucho, I'm leaving in about a week for a trip to Asia, and I think I'll find some place to do something with that money that will help the uh, goodwill of the United States, some children or someone in the audience. Well, after donating that $500 tonight to the boys' home, I'm sure that you'll do a lot of good with whatever money you got tonight. And good luck, and thanks to both of you. From the more than 3,000 years out of the day, that's a lot. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic 
with fully automatic power flight transmission. Also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low price field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Be safe, be seen. At night, wear white. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.